Pause is our second best of five. Uh, from my from my visions or from my from my visions from from what I can see, we are still lagging a bit. Um, we're gonna keep on assessing the situation as professional casters we are here or caster we are here uh, on Roddy TV. Um, if it kind of keeps up being shit, we might just drop out. Uh, <laughs> which sounds really bad, but I mean, there's a there's a point where. I'd rather not provide a stream than provide a super awful stream, you know, so uh, we're gonna try and see what's going on, see what happens. For now, we will jump into Proxima Station for game one, though, of Harston versus Champs. So let's do this and let's see how it'll go as we start to the top right-hand side of the map. Uh, Dutch Protoss player is Harston. And down to the bottom left. A red Zerg player from OSC Root is the Mexican player Cham. This is going to open up with a pretty fast third hatchery. Obviously, he expands the low ground pretty quickly right away, but it goes up into gas pool and then the third, the, well, the third hatchery is super quick on his natural. So, very fast free hatches here on Proxima. An easy map to defend multiple bases on, but still a little bit surprising that it's going to be such a fast free hatchery. Uh, just wants to kind of get up into that economy early and just focus on building drones, 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 a few queens here and there. I'm just going from that point on is Harsom, of course. Well, his perspective so far, he's actually going to start making a Zealot. Maybe it's for safety. Maybe he really wants to push across the map with this. Uh, generally, you make the Zealot just to be safe, but I guess as he sees the low ground expansion, you won't be too worried about Zerglings. Might still be something he goes in towards, though, so let's see if he lets it finish or not. I mean, if you do let it finish, you can generally then harass with it and get some damage done. I mean, his Zernexus is already finished up, so he's got that nice and quickly himself, and he has got a good amount of economy of his own to work with here. I'm not really sure that's a lot of fall off, but I mean, hey, he's trying, man. He's trying this little zealot. He's trying as best he can. Stargate on the way up as well in the main base as Harston sets this up and uh, looks to see how it's going to work out. Stark, there, uh, Stark, Stalker, Stalker on the way out now too. In a second, gate will come down. So really, I mean, considering we're once again in PVZ, we're going to be masters of PVZ by the end of today. Uh, we're just going to see that Stargate coming up, and it's just going to allow Harstum to most likely go into Sky Tours. It's Proxima Station. The first three bases come down for free, more or less. The fourth base is not very far away either. You're going to have a pretty good time here on Proxima, as we're going to be seeing the Stalker starting to work his way through this Overlord. Just uh, picking away at that there, chipping away at its health. And we'll be able to stop any further scouting coming through. Not sure if the Overlord saw the Stargate. I feel as though it's too far right to see it. Nope, did see it very early on, actually. Or maybe this was this Overlord that popped in and came back out would make sense, so... Still see the Stargate coming up, and so Cham is able to start getting Spore Crawlers in position in plenty of time. And you shouldn't really look to be taking too much damage from this at all, so... Looking kind of okay right now, just see a couple of extra gates finishing, that's three gates in total. And Harston for him, time to take the third Nexus, so gonna set that down. And that's gonna be, uh, again, just setting up nicely, we'll start the wall off the third base too, and again from here... He's very much so free to do as he wishes, you know, there's not gonna be a lot the Zerg can really do to pressure him to punish him. So Harson can just set up into multiple Stargates, as we mentioned before, and go into Sky Toss, or he can go into that ground-based army, which we've seen a bit more of as of late, actually, as the Sky Toss gets a bit figured out from the Zerg perspective. We see sometimes Protoss players, again, focusing more on kind of Immortal Sentry, maybe getting up that Resonating Glaives early, going into the Blink afterwards, too. And so, uh, and all the rest of it as well, basically. So, Oracle does come around the left-hand side, Robo Facility is starting to build. So we're obviously starting to build on up here, and we're going to see the Evo Chamber on the way down. Lair will be finishing up in just a few moments. Let's get from Chow, we don't really see what exactly his game plan is. He's got about 200 gas as the Lair finishes though, so... Potential for Spire, potential for Hydrogen as well. Both will be very common ways of dealing with that incoming. Potential Sky Toss. Let's see the Hydra's Den is the choice from Chan. A bit more of a common choice, I mean, to go straight Spire. A little bit risky, leaves you a little bit vulnerable at points as well. So this does make just a little bit more sense for him right from the get-go. Now we see the Robo Twilight and the Forge on the way up from Harston. The set of uh, builders really will allow him to go in towards a very standard ground-based mid-game with more depths and everything else, so that's sort of what uh, we see Cham... Oh, sorry, sorry, see Harston moving towards right now, first and more on the way. I'm not going to play that Sky Toss player style which we've seen previously. Harston did come out of the European group of the uh, competition, of course, in second place. Losing out to Showtime, uh, but did manage to beat, uh, defeat Geothermal twice over to move on through the group. Cham, coming out of the NA group in first place, did take down Panda Bear Me. It was a pretty easy day for Cham. 
Touchdown Smile and Panda Bear Me. Now the third player, sorry, the final player of the group, Massa, unfortunately did not show, and so didn't have very many games on the NA group, and it meant that Cham only had to win, well, a couple of series, but, I mean, it was expected wins for him, I feel. And he made them look pretty easy as well, as he uh, went through, as we do see the Oracles again, just looking around, seeing what's going on. Actually, we see some pushing up in towards the third base, but just not really going to be getting there in time to do anything too meaningful, as we see the Templar Archives fishing from Halston, and again, just charge the bottom little Archon seems to be the way to go for him at the moment. Might go into the Storm Upgrade. The one issue with the Storm Upgrade is that it does take a little while to finish. And see so a little bit more vulnerable while the Storm Upgrade is finishing. But of course, if you can survive until the Storm, you're going to make those Zerglings melt. You're going to make the Hydras melt as well. And that's going to put you in a pretty decent spot for the most part, too. As we see those Lings and Hydras do manage to take down the rocks. And a couple of these Oracles are going to come around the right hand side. And just, uh, well, I'm not sure what they're actually going to do over here. Just keep watching, I guess, keeping an eye on this sort of avenue of attack, which. Might be a little bit vulnerable. Not a complete wall off here for Harson, which is fine, of course, because he just wants some space to be able to move through and attack himself. Is the Hydra starting to arrive at the front? And here we go. Does Harson have enough to fight against this? Plus one missile's about to finish from Cham. That's going to be an extra little added bit of damage for him here. And we're going to see the pylon going down. A couple more units still just warping in. Mothership Core drops an overcharge, but just a little bit too far away to really do too much. And this is oftentimes the one issue you do have in Proxima where it's very difficult to fight through your wall into your opponent because. So how many bases, or how many maps do you often get to kind of wall a third base on? Well, not super often. And so when you do get it on Proximate, sometimes you lose your wall. And that's happening right here. But again, Harson buying time for the Storm to finish. Does this guy have any High Templar? Yes, he does. Do they have Storm Energy? Yes, they do. First Storm lands, second Storm as well. And actually, these Hydras are disappearing. Great first few Storms. And now the Zealots tanking away at the Zergans, which have made their way forwards. Still quite a few Hydras in the back. And I mean, they're lower on health, but... They're still around as we're going to see them pushing forwards now, and a couple more Zelts going down. Oracles 2 getting dropped. As we're going to see now, a few more Zelts walking in towards the front. Carlson actually going to start pulling probes and try and push this back. A queen arrives. Transfuse comes in, saves a Hydra for a few more moments. And I'm just going to be seeing these Hydras still pushing on, and again, we're going to see what else might happen. Just trying to do just again, a little bit more right here. Another Zelt again shot down. This pylon being overcharged once more. And the Hydras just still sat around, and. Well, reinforcements still coming across the map. Cham very committed to this attack. If Harsman holds it off, it's not the end of the world for Cham, but his fourth base is very late. He is on a lower work count, albeit only by a couple of workers. You see Harsman dropping the force field, a couple more hiders getting picked off. Harsman just doesn't feel as though he has the war pins to really deal with this, and while he has got a kind of increase in the mortal number, you know, where's everything else? You know, where are those zealots which are charging forwards and tanking? Well, there's one or two here, but not really that many. As now probes going down, Cham behind the mineral line, and Harsman. So he's in a lot of trouble right now. Cham pulling back a little bit further here. This Archon going down as well. That's just going to be GG right off the bat. Cham has a little bit too much. And he's going to be taking game number one of the going game. Let's introduce our players as we go into New Kirk Precinct. I believe Zerg on the bottom left hand side is going to be our OSC root player. Give it up if you're cheering on Cham. Scrolling intros don't work very well when you've got low FPS. <laughs> As we have the bottom right hand side, our pink Protoss player, it is Harson. Still currently teamless, although doing pretty well for himself. Had a very successful year last year. Finally, I think it was the year of Harson for once and for all. As he did uh, come through winning Home Story Cup, win the GPL Gold Series event in Shanghai as well. As we get set to jump into the second game, look to see what will happen. I mean, Newkirk again, a bit more of a defensive map, but a map where the aggressive options are going to be um, open as well. Wardy, what do I rather subscribe on Twitch or Patreon? Well, I actually shut down my Patreon page because I if I found it difficult to kind of put enough effort and love into the Patreon that I deserved, so we shut uh, we shut the Patreon page down. Um, so subbing on Twitch, very simple answer. I think subbing on Twitch is better, anyways. You know, I mean, I think I, I get a bit more of a percentage from Patreon, obviously, but. The the sub count is a kind of a big thing in the stream, growing the stream as well, getting towards more sub emotes and so on. So I think it's always um, I think it's almost uh, always kind of more preferable for a Twitch sub than a Patreon pledge of five dollars. I mean, arguably, if you're going to pledge more than five dollars, maybe I think the other way. But I think for the most part, kind of the um, the Twitch sub generally is what most streamers would prefer, really, because. Again, Twitch subs really help you to grow your channel, grow your brand, people get emotes to use. It's better for, for the most part, it's better for the, um... You know, 
for the most part, he's, at some point, it's better for a. Uh, it's just better in general for growing your stream and stuff, right? Than it is to. Uh, well, just have some extra little bit of money. I don't know, like, that's my view. I mean, extra money is always great and it's always very useful, but I think growing the Twitch is end in the end going to give you the extra money overall, anyways, right? Does that make sense? I don't think I'm really explaining this very well. I don't think I've explained this very well at all as we see this overlord moving over to the right hand side. Having a little bit of a look to see what's going on in these early stages, not too much. See the warp gate is on the way on the side of next call. The adept just over halfway done on the gateway as well. You can see the Stargate dropping down from Austin. Once again, this Stargate based tech, we'll see if he plays a similar sort of opening or whether he's going to go for a bit of a different uh, setup instead. Again, this time maybe he does throw down those extra Stargates, but. If he doesn't do that in Proxima Station, I find it difficult to imagine that he's going to be doing it on um, Newkirk Precinct. Because while the third base is still fairly easy to hold on Newkirk, it is a lot more open, much easier to surround, and generally those Zerg attacks will be more difficult to fend off. So, if you're going to do it, if you're not going to do it on Proxima Play Sky Force, you're probably not going to do it throughout the series, unless you really later in the series want to change things up and just start, make, you know, start making things go a little bit differently. So. We'll see, we'll see, as we see two gates coming down. The first Oracle on the way out from Harston. Gonna be finishing up here in the next few moments, so... That Oracle finishing very soon, and... Yeah, gonna set it up into this, looking to see... how this is gonna go. You see the, uh, Metabolic Boost is about halfway done from Cham. Looks like this given the, uh, Zertan speed, which... Again, will be for the early stages, mostly just for scouting, maybe catching an adept here and there. Maybe responding to a couple of adepts as well. Let's pass them past those two gates. Still no sign of further tech. We're watching for that forge or twilight. Or robo even. Anything along those lines. To give us a bit of a better idea as to what this follow-up is going to be. As a few links just sat towards the natural momentarily. You can see a queen coming up on this hatchery on the third base. And Marston just dropping his own third nexus too. Stargate is uh, starting up the second oracle as the first one just arrived across the map. A bit slow to start the second oracle, but... I think that late than never, and well, two drones on the first Oracle gets out of there with the majority of its health intact, so what was nice is in the last game, Harson did swoop in with these two Oracles at a time, and you can see how quickly they pick off workers because they obviously are twice as fast basically, but they one-shot workers, the two of them, so that's super awesome, super useful, and does go a long way. See this uh, Oracle still towards the center a little bit, but as you can see Harson's third base, a little bit unprotected, Oracle will fly forwards and Probably will just pass the beta screen right here just to start pushing the Zerg on his back. Actually, Harson's awesome, very greedy, no mothership caught up until now, so... Kind of a little bit punished for that there by having a pop the course of beam on the Oracle early, and just means he's not going to be able to do quite as much harassment on the left-hand side. And as we're going to be seeing the, uh... Again, Oracle just coming over to the left, and we have to see one Oracle getting taken down, and Death being surrounded, Cham! Shuts down Harston immediately here and should him instantly just go to counterattack, right? Shuts down one of the two oracles, all of the adepts, and at least apply some pressure, look to see what else he can get done, because this has been fantastic for him up until here. Cham 1 0 up in the series as well, remember. If he wins this, he is uh, 2 0 up in the best of five, and has a difficult road back to redemption for Harston at that point. And we do see the uh, Zergen surrounding him. We see a few of them jumping onto those that pylon as well. Pylon probably going to go down in the next couple of moments, and you see some of these probes being worked away at too, so probes being picked off. Zell also again just helping out in the end. But still nice is just Cham pushing himself into a bit more of an advantage after again the early stages have already gone in his favour. Robo facility gonna finish up for Harson and the Twilight Council too, I mean at this point it is pretty obvious that we're gonna be seeing the ground base comp, although we are seeing some Phoenix production, but mostly I think just the single one. Start chasing down a couple of these overlords, and then you'll be able to kind of patrol it down here and keep an eye on any incoming drops, just for a bit of a pre-warning, so you can respond in plenty of time and not lose a mineral line of uh, drones to balance. Uh, people mentioned in the uh, hosts, and maybe, maybe not the viewer count increasing, uh, hosts are a little bit weird nowadays, where it'll say, it kind of changes, it changes all the time, but uh, at the moment it's in a phase where it will kind of basically as far as I'm aware, it will say, oh, you've been hosted up for this many viewers. Uh, but not all of those viewers will actually get the host. Some of them will just not have their play activated, and some won't have host turned on. So it's not going to go up as much as it says. And a lot of them are kind of, well, pretty much all of them apart from the mana host is auto host. So it's very likely that people aren't just going to transfer over to the stream as well. So, can hosts are a really weird thing. It feels like Twitch can never, and Twitch and the Twitch API can never figure it out. Because every week it changes how 
that broken. Like sometimes it's like you host someone up for no matter how many viewers, it's like you host them for one viewer. And then the next week it's like it's like this. It's like oh you host them for thousands of viewers and there's actually like ten. <laughs> so it's uh, something the Twitch API seems to struggle with a little bit when uh, the bots are playing. Your sub, Sully76. Wow, Matt on the sub watch. He's on point. <laughs> Sully76, thank you for subscribing. Get your drink going after the game, or we'll drink in celebration. Definitely isn't to do with the sub, because maybe that's against terms of service. I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm still pretty sure it is. We're not, we're not dying, so. Thank you for the sub, though. We'll shout you out properly in just a few moments, because we do see Hydra's starting from ass at the front, but it doesn't feel as though there's that much here uh, right away. Does he have, what does Hossam have? He doesn't even have Glaives. He's going into charge right away of the Twilight. And his storms are very far away away. It's actually a very similar push from the last time from Charmin. Feels as though Hossam is in a bit of a worse position this time around. Like, how does he buy the time for Storm to come up here? These Hydra's already pushing down one gateway. A second gateway will be under fire momentarily. And, I mean, these Zealots don't have charge even to start charging in, closing the gap. Three of them charge forwards now, but again, the Hydra DPS is insane. Storm, did it finish or did he cancel it? He cancelled the Storm. Because I guess he just wants as much money as he can get to hold this off. Oh man, well let's see how this goes. We're going to be seeing units gathering together on the third. And well, we'll begin to charge forwards. Lings and Hydras though, man. The Hydras really just going to be that damage output. That's really scary for Austin to push into. That's why he needs some sort of splash damage. That's why he tries to get the Storm up. Revelation comes down. Austin's going to start pushing forwards. But man, those Archons are dropping very quickly. One, very low health to the top side as Cham. Up 1-0 in the series, remember, if he wins this, he's going to be on match point already. He's going to see another Archon drop in, and means out. will try to push forwards, but GG is called, and Austin's build is just not working out for him. We are in game. We're minute 30 in. Let's do this. Down two games to the top left-hand side of the map. Are you really going to cook up the left-hand side? Matt hates being called out. We can call him out on anything, he's gonna fix it. <laughs> Amazing. Alright, guys, top left hand side, the Red Cross player. Down 0 2, can he start a bounce back? It is Harston. Coming on in, let's see what he can get up to. As we have down to the bottom right, our Blue Zerg player from OSC Root. It is Cham. Again, thanks for the support, guys. Obviously, it does go a long way in seriousness. It's not just getting me happy, it is getting me um, ability to pay rent and stuff, and it does allow me to keep on streaming, etc. So. Yeah, it's a, if you support, it's always uh, appreciated. And he buys me takeaway. <laughs> and I buy him takeaway. I bought him a takeaway because he's lending me his house and internet and being quiet for four hours very boringly until we go out. So, I was nice. And it's Leeds as well, so takeaway is like really cheap. It's insane. You can buy like four meals for the price of like one anywhere else. <laughs> Newcastle's, uh, New Newcastle, uh, Leeds is crazy, man. There's so many takeaways in Leeds. I used to say this all the time, um, way back when I was lived in Leeds, but man, there's, what's crazy is like where, where Matt lives, which is where we are, is actually just one street over from where I used to live, and uh, there's like, I think in prime time, like right now, there's like 200 plus different takeaways that deliver here. It's insane. I guess that's the city center for you, but man, pretty crazy. All right, so we're settling up into game number three, and Chan is on the verge of victory. As we see Hossum sticking to the same old thing so far. Stargate coming down, starts an Oracle. Obviously plenty of room for him to change things up at this point, but I mean, you gotta start worrying a little bit because he has just been going for the same old time and time again. So it's been a little bit weird up until now. And as we do see, the Oracle is about 75% of the way done. We'll be completing very soon. And we'll start ahead across the map. Link has been pretty late from Cham, so he obviously went up to the free hatcheries very quickly in a much later gas. So again, focusing on economy in the early stages rather than building up that tech. But now he's going to go for a Bane Nest. Probably just a safety thing. A few Adepts on the way out from Harston. What is this build, man? He has the free gates just come down. Warp Gate not yet finished. But again, the Bane Nest up. Champ going to be very safe against uh, Adept-based attacks then. I wonder if he uh, he is joining up further. I was going to say for a moment or two, it looks though with the low drone count, he could maybe be about to spam a bunch of Lings and go Ling Bane bus, but it doesn't really make too much sense. His man, this Oracle getting very low. Harstam has to be careful with it. As I pulls back in towards the center of the map, so Oracle pulling back in towards the center. Another Oracle starting to build as well from Harstam. Again, same build so far, but I guess my question is, does he change up the follow up? Because that's where. The real damage. I mean, opening a Stargate and double Oracle isn't weird or anything. 
But to be fair, Cham's changing things up as well, making Banelin something he hasn't done in the previous games. He's playing a lot safer. In fact, a Bane's on the way. It's a lot of Banes for Cham to commit to when he isn't really under attack. So I think Cham may have just completely misread this situation. But I mean, he saw the Stargate. What didn't he, you know, what did he see to kind of misread this and to start saying, oh my god, I need so many Banes? I mean, there is some Adepts coming across the map, so the Banes will be useful, but do you need the Banes against non glaive Adepts? I guess there's nine of them, and I guess maybe just the gateway timing. Isn't it potential? What just gave this away? Here you go, Hostum. Well, he will start shading the Adepts forwards, pulling them back there, starting to split up where possible. And we'll cancel that shade and keep on trying to push forwards. Queen's, of course, trying to keep in range of the Oracle at the same time. We're going to see some Adepts going to shade over to the right-hand side once again. Going to try and hit this mineral line. Zergling's going to run on over here and look to see what they can do. It's the Queens, though. One of them's very low. It will go down. Oracle picking up the kill. Nice micro from Harstum. But his Adept now starting to fall. Cham cleans up. And he still sits about 12 workers up. Just these Oracles still in the sky. This may be the more annoying part of this because he does have to pull drones away. Sporecrawler can only reach so far. And that's going to be about it for now. Twilight and the Forge back at home. Harstum. Believe it or not, a similar follow-up once again, however, Cham's lair this time around is much later. His any sort of attack he goes for here is going to be way later than it should be, kind of, uh, you know, than it has been in the previous games, just because of that lair time and the commitment to the Banelians taking up a bunch of their uh, gas. So maybe Hawthorne has found a way to slow Cham down enough here to just, uh, you know, to get in towards a decent position for himself in the mid-game as lair now finishes a Hydrogen once again. I mean, if the Baneling nest down, though, if we see he can add in the Baneling speed, and so instead of just Ling Hydra pushes, he could play Ling Bane Hydra, which is obviously a big positive, too. Evil Chamber on the way up. Ling Bane Hydra, I mean, obviously, belly uh, benefits from both melee and from missile upgrades. I imagine he'll go missile upgrades right away, actually. It's a tough one to call, because the Hydra damage is very important, but man, those Banelings, if you can get those to just chew through everything, then it's kind of important, too. He is going to opt for the melee, so melee it is. I'm going to see the muscular organs now starting up as well from the Hydralis Dam. So muscular organs on the way. And we do see the uh, Bane Speed about halfway done. Templar Archives about to finish up as well from Halston here. Two extra gates just on the way, building now and charge. About halfway done. Phoenix comes in, helps pick off that Overlord, and again, a whole bunch of Hydralis starting to come out from Cham. So. I mean, does he really go for a push? Does he push with kind of plus one and all of the speed upgrades finishing up? Definitely a possibility. Fourth base to the left-hand side from Harston is so on set up as well, the pylon building here too. I mean, for once, Harston isn't under pressure before taking the fourth, so definitely looking a little bit more stable and better than he has in previous games. But obviously, Cham is playing a bit of a different composition anyway, so we're still yet to see how Harston will deal with a larger army. However, he will have himself the time to get into the storm upgrade, which is what he's kept trying to go for and just hasn't made it to in previous attempts. I mean, plus one melee is going to finish maybe a bit late. Maybe he's actually just going to push with four plus one melee and see if he can get something done here quickly. But again, Hawson just has so many more tech-heavy units ready, and he should have Storm ready as well. So, is it going to be enough? Let's find out. Initially, these Ling's just going to back away. Hydra's not in range to pick up some damage on those Zealots as they charge forwards. And another few units just walking on in here again, ready to go. Hawson. Looking to push down this left-hand side of the map. There's Cham, more Banes, more Vanilla Lings, and Hydra's pulling to the left as well. These two Oracles still coming down the south. Going to be one of them going down the Overseer with the high ground vision there being the savior. So I allow him to pick up one of those Oracle kills, which is something at least. Two more High Templar walking in. Storm comes down from one of the High Templar, but dodged away by Cham. I mean, that's awesome. The more you dodge away from those, the more Storms you bait out. The worse this will go for Harston, of course, as again, Harston, mode down 0-2. Has to win this game or his underdog's tournament run is completely over. And a lot of Zelda's clumped up and towards the front here. You're going to see Cham taking the opportunity to move up the ramp at the natural. Going to try and catch his opponent out of position. Bane's connection with all of the Zealots. This is not really the engagement that Harston wants. As, I mean, the Zealots are not really one of the ones that are meant to kind of soak the Bane hits. The Zealots are meant to come in later. They're meant to help out. And Harston's going to GG right there. Cham with the free zero.